Yes, so uh, welcome all uh, Glastonbury Festival friends to my beautiful Stone Age courtyard here right in the heart of Glastonbury. And I want to share with you uh, my story and how the Glastonbury Festival has changed my life. So I need to go back in time uh, 26 years ago. It was in 1994 when I was uh, with my family, with my uh, partner Tessa and my son Kai, we were up in Putzi near Leeds visiting uh, Tessa's parents and camping out in the backyard. And uh, one morning uh, a newspaper got delivered the old way. It was flying over the fence and it landed on my tent and I opened up the newspaper and there was a one page ad advertising the Glastonbury Festival in Glastonbury, Somerset. Uh, I have never heard about Glastonbury before. This was my first visit to England. Uh, I always thought I'm not going to come to England because I always thought it's going to rain there all the time. But also that has changed because we have such beautiful summers here. Anyway, I opened the newspaper. I looked at the Glastonbury Festival ad and I said, Tessa, Kai, we got to go there. It's happening this weekend. And so we jumped into the van. We lived in a van at the time, like travelers do. And uh, we drove down the M1 and we bypassed London and we had the, towards the A303, driving down the road, great rock music on. And suddenly went over that hill and there was Stonehenge right in front of me the first time I saw Stonehenge with my eyes and I was screaming I was like wow 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 and suddenly a magical journey began and I think this is for everybody that drives from London to the Glastonbury Festival this is the point of entry passing by Stonehenge being reminded of our ancient history and our magic land that we have here. So driving on, suddenly coming into the Vale of Avalon and seeing this Glastonbury tour from far away. And again, I had a very, very deep emotional moment and I suddenly recognized that I was coming home. Uh, so we uh, drove to Pilton and uh, we uh, went, arrived at the gate, small problem, we didn't have a ticket for the festival. So uh, uh, I talked to one of the guards and I showed him uh, these uh, magical creations that I do that are now available in Stone Age right here behind me because I create jewelry and I create magical objects. So I showed him some of them and I told him that we drove all the way from Germany just to come to the festival, but now we don't have tickets. So what happened, and believe it or not, he said, oh, why don't you just drive up to uh, Michael Evis' farmhouse and ask him uh, if there is anything he can do. And so we drove up and we knocked at his door and Michael Evis opened uh, the door and invited us into his living room and we started to talk about our journey, about what we do with the jewelry and with our magical tools and... Uh, and we were able to convince him that we should be part of this Glastonbury Festival. So he said, yes, go over to this gate and just tell him this and that and you will be in. And there we were um, inside the Glastonbury Festival having the most amazing time. We set up a stall. I was selling pendants. We were connecting with the people. It was brilliant festival. The sun was shining. No mud. Everything was perfect. So, um, after the festival was all, all over, we decided to head down to Glastonbury Town. And, my God, what a welcome it was for us. Uh, arrived in the town, parked down by the tour, walked up the tour, and uh, something very special, magical happened, because on top of the tour, the first time we went up there, I met somebody who was wearing one of my pendants that I had created and I, he had purchased of me five years earlier in India, in Goa. So that I took as a very, very good sign. And then just, it's just a magical story un, un, unfolded and we went down 
went, there was a gallery at the Glastonbury, bottom of the Glastonbury tour, and we went in there again, we showed the Mao magical creations, and they said, wow, you can have an exhibition here tomorrow. And so, uh, wow, well, we went there the next day and we, we uh, opened a stall and, and our, our creations were so well received and it was such a beautiful day. And we immediately realized that this is the place that we should make our home. And that's when we decided we're gonna go back to India, we're gonna pack everything up and we're gonna move to Glastonbury the ancient Isle of Avalon, probably the most magical place on planet Earth. So I want to give a big, big thank you to Michael Evis, uh, the organizer of the Glastonbury Festival, world famous, amazing uh, gathering of artists and performers and musicians that happens every year. But this year it's not because we all know it's because of the Mm -mm. So, uh, that is my story that I wanted to share with you and uh, again I wanted to tell you this shop would not be here, I would not be here, my life would not be the same, I would not be Louis, the King of the Crystals right now if it would not be for the most amazing of all festivals, the Glastonbury Festival. Thank you very much.